Fred Dibner has spent 27 years restoring his traction engine, and now at last it's ready for the open road. Today is day one of his big journey. He's setting off on a grand tour of Britain in search of everything that went into building and running an engine like this. Off moves in now. Like the traction engine men of old, he plans to stay in his living bag. Go on back, Fred. But first, he's got to get it out of his garden. He's due to leave in half an hour. You ready? Yeah, get your fingers crossed. But there's a problem with the brakes, and it's costing them valuable time. I can't see nothing here. Hey, don't put too much on, you're going to have his leg. Go on, it's ready. Get it close, can't you? Hold it off, hold it off. Get off, What are you doing? Oh, don't go, sorry. But at last, after a two-hour struggle, they succeed in getting it out onto the road. I'm knackered and we're not set off yet. <laughs> right, flashing light on the back. There we are. Oh, not so much right. Yeah. Well, after a few trials and tribulations, at long last we're ready for our epic journey. Well, the first thing we need is plenty of coal, so we're off to the coal mine. It's 12 o'clock before they get going, two or three hours behind schedule already. Whichever way you go out of Bolton, it's all uphill. So it's an early test for the engine. First day, they all just come to us, but that's what we're doing. Can't hear you, I'm getting this here. Oh. <laughs> Their destination is an open cast mine between Wigan and St Helens. It's only about 14 miles from Bolton, so it sounds simple enough to get there in a day. But Fred's engine has had a complete rebuild, so a few teething troubles are to be expected. And they soon start. They're only a mile and a half out of Bolton, and some adjustments are needed. We've run out of steam and run out of water. I mean, that's a big hill for a traction engine. From now on, it's all downhill and, it, and it's fairly flat, so we should be in with a chance like it. No guts in it, you know, at all. Yeah. yeah. Not happy with it at all, you know. I think I'll sell it. <laughs> Did we ever do that with that mechanical lubricant? Because it isn't working. What it is, it's, it's that, that, that there. There's no oil going in the cylinder, so it's like running dry, you know, which is not good, you know. If you did that with your motor car, it wouldn't get very far, you know. You'd start making squeaky noises and, uh, and stop. <laughs> that might be all right, now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> John were right, you know. Should have sold the lot and bought a stamp collection. You carry it about in your back pocket. <laughs> when it's worth just as much money. Fred Steersman is retired miner Alf Molyneux. And all of this is a bit new for him. Real. Hey. Oh, don't go near that bird. There's entrance here. Eh? There's entrance. Dentist. Right. There's entrance, keep clear. Oh yeah, right. well, not be here, that one. You don't want block in, do you? No, 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 no. This is the life, life on the open road. Yeah. <laughs> See why they invented diesel engines. These things weren't really designed to be driven in traffic like this, and 11 tons moving at around 10 miles an hour 
doesn't stop in a hurry. It's hot, thirsty work. Time for some refreshments soon. Sorry to you. How long's camp out though? We're soon. Just back here. At least it's got the locals interested. It's clear there. Hey. Block, blocks in. Well, they made this jacket, but you can't put your glasses in top of it. It must be 10, 10, 10 or 14 miles to here. Yeah. Considering we ought to be in two bad. It's half past three. It's not that view, you won't leave it, but I have to stop it though when, when it's going to that. <laughs> I think we'll get to this open cast mine. They might all have gone home, but we'll get there, you know. Tea time already, and they're still four or five miles away from the mine. I hope they've not left yet. This is the man who owns the mine. I've forgotten his name. Stewart. <laughs> Stewart, yeah. Yeah. But you don't have any clothes tonight then? No, <laughs> you're not that bothered. Is there a good bug near your pet? Yeah, not far away. You've got right? a decent car park. Huh? Yeah. Oh, well, we'll eat then. You won't mind your parking up. Oh, well, very good. Yeah. I'll have see you, you about midnight then. Have, have you? <laughs> not that bloody far, is it? <laughs> <laughs> It was supposed to be a surprise visit, you know. Right. He gives me call, this lad, you know. I don't have to pay for it, he gives it me. It's been a long, hard day. And it's all been a bit of a disappointment. Time to find somewhere to stop for the night. There's something amiss somewhere, you know. Um, uh, it should go better than it is doing. Number one, the mechanical lubricators fell off altogether now, you know. <laughs> it's hanging on top of boiler. Yeah. The thing is, we've hardly any coal left. You know, we've earned all coal. You know, like the steamroller, we've got the big firing shovel, we've forgotten that, we've forgotten the big rake. With, with all the excitement, we've forgotten half the tackle. But are they going to be able to park up here? Would it offend you if we parked our machine at the end of your car park? Of course it would. Eh? No, that'd be fine. We'll sleep with it tonight, you know, we'll come and have a pint with you. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, you can yeah. stay overnight? Eh? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, don't leave that, you know. That's took 27 years and two divorces get it to the state. <laughs> not performed as well as I thought it would be. <laughs> so the teething troubles, I think. You know, it's like there's something come loose somewhere, I think. It goes better backwards than forwards. There's something amiss. It's not run away, this. We can hold it back. Can you it. Can it. No, no, we can hold it back. You're bloody kidding, mate. No, it's not too heavy. This van weighs nearly three tonnes, so there's going to be a lot of hard work in store. <laughs> We've burned a bit, haven't we? The end of a perfect day, you know, we've had a nice pub that does grub. And it looks nice and safe, you know, for the engine. And, uh, you know, we'll spend the night here before we go to the open cast coal mine in the morning. So, good night, so see you later. Uh, It's 6 a.m. Time to get steam up. What sort of weight is this, Brad? Uh, it's nine, uh, eight tons. Eight tons. Pottery mm -hmm. motion, isn't it? Isn't that what you want in here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got a Jimmy Crooks, door. another retired mining friend, is following in his car to provide the backup. Not power assisted steering. <laughs> 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 oh, oh. <laughs> when you play in this steering. <laughs> hey, Fred, you need an MOT for one of these? It's not an MOT, it's a 
the boiler inspection, you know. Ah. The... Do you have a look at it, see if it's roadworthy? Yeah, well, no, ah. they never, that's a no, funny it... thing. They, they never uh, actually ask you ah. about its mechanical condition. They're only interested in it in the boiler blowing ah. up. Mm. And, of course, mm. there's some of them are positively dangerous when it comes to okay. going down big hills and all that. Nobody oh, oh, asks you about the state oh, of the gears or, or the brakes, like the brakes and, no, and all that. Right. Right. Yeah, some of them have no brakes. Like. Only two two gears? Yeah, for oh. the reverse. Slow and very slow. Double oh. <laughs> there, Jimmy. It probably spread this, doesn't it? Eh? <laughs> Where are we now, Jimmy? Billings. Billings? Well, where's this bloody Dire Straits place? Which Dire Straits on about place? It. Eh? Fred keeps saying we're in Dire Straits. <laughs> I don't know where this place is. I hope we're not going to it. <laughs> That's what we was in yesterday. I mean, it's the longest journey we've been on it. And I think, really, considering we didn't leave till lunchtime, and we were here at 7 o'clock, and it's, what, 10, 14 miles or something like that. It, it, with all the things that went wrong, I think we did bloody well get here. How's that? Good as new, that. So hopefully it'll be a bit quicker today. Maybe, yeah. I'm, I can't promise you nothing. Anyway. <laughs> can't go yet. No, no, we're not going. We've got to have a brew, haven't we? The lady's making well, a brew. We've got to have a brew and get some water in boiler. Give us uh, key for it. we get water Give us key for locked doors. <coughs> key for locked doors? Don't know. Well, it's not in the doors. Uh, All right, it might be in there. We haven't used it this morning. Uh, I might have hung it up on a, on a nail in there. Um, oh, bloody hell. Uh, Hi, it's all about the joys of tracking engine on it. Well, it's a day late, but they've only got another two miles to go, so they should be at the open cast soon. Believe it or not, it's performed very well, you know, we've not run out of steam. We've not run out of oil. Uh, and also, we we haven't got the, forgot the rake for flinkering the fire. And, uh, the, uh, oops, wait a minute. Uh, oh, what have I done? I've done something very silly. I've, I got carried away and the, the bloody boiler's going to be full up to the top. As soon as we move it, woof, woof, out of the funnel. Yeah. That's... No, we're not concentrating, you see. We're acting as well as trying to do this. It's a big thing for a brain like I've got. <laughs> What's happened is that Fred has injected too much water into the boiler. Yeah, these people, Jack, they're on and off the bloody thing, you know. Give us the spanner back. Uh, this means that water no, no, will get no, sucked into the cylinder with the steam, an and that's not very good for the engine. So he's going to have to open a valve near the bottom of the boiler to get some of the boiling water out. Can you see out? No, I can't see nothing. <laughs> no, I just think, you know, there were 70 odd coal mines around yeah. here in the 1950s. A lot of them Yeah, 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 really. Here, coal it? industry in Lancashire were mainly around Wigan and Aberton Lee, and uh, for, you know, basically for the for the cotton industry and all. And, uh, Slowly but surely, in 1960s, it all but disappeared. Nothing at all left of it. And how many thousand men worked in it, you know? Well, I think there were a spell when everyone could yeah. be connected in one way and another to the coal industry. Mining, there was mining, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. But today, fewer than 500 people work in the mining and quarrying industries combined. 
One of the only places left where coal is still extracted is this open cast site. Do you think it would have been dark down here, Fred, when oh, there was uh, sure, yeah. working? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, with them, with them little one candle power oil lamps that they have, yeah. eh? It used to be a proper coal mine, and this passageway was once part of the underground workings. Oh. You're not coming back down here, will you? It'll be all right, Fred. All right. Look at that, Oh, Cut it? it quite straight though, didn't it? Yeah, to be oh, fair, they yeah. did a good job. Right, oh, sides are flat. They left a coal yeah. roof here. Yeah. But yeah. you'd have thought they'd have worked wider. I'd have thought they'd have been wider mm. than this. Yeah. yeah. But but they've worked it without props. So they've obviously took as yeah. much as they do. There's no props in it at all. Mm -hmm. Then we're wide. What no age pillar. are these workings? Any ideas? They're around the 1930s. What does that seem up there? Well, if you look at the top there, yeah. that's the Wigan five foot seam. Right. And what they did with that, as you can see, they've got a good sandstone roof on it. Yeah. So they've took most of the coal, they've left very little coal in that. Mm. Oh, yeah, did yeah. you not find nothing? No artifacts of any kind? Found a few rails and oh, a couple it? of tubs. Oh, right. And the only thing we found in the Wigan Forefoot is uh, a few bones, which we think was the ponies. No. Oh. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Never seen the light. He there. went down and never come back up. Well, <laughs> yeah. oh, Chelsea with no roof on them when it had a roof, didn't it? Look at that, Jimmy. Yeah. That's a fur crack, isn't it? Yeah. That's yeah. on a bit of weight on it, aren't it? Yeah. Hey, old Fred, he'll drop on your head. Mm. <laughs> mm. Oh, he'll get a degree in geology. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's going to be on left soon, though, Fred. It's going to be the last I'm saying. Open casting. It's, it's, it's the last one in Lancashire, you know. Oh, like the chimney job, you know. <laughs> I yeah. know we'll never be doing it anymore. <laughs> Manchester Evening News, this is your last one, innit? So, no, if I can bloody help it, it didn't. Yeah. And then we go and get coal in there, Alf. With difficulty, I imagine, we're going to have to find something to push it to back. back. I've no doubt Stuart or somebody will find a couple of mugs for all it. <laughs> <laughs> Me and you. And then you uh, yeah. can just speed job up a bit, it? Just made it all day. Yeah. We'll not fill it to top that with his eyes are back. As ex-miners, Alf and Jimmy are both on familiar ground here. Got his shovel in coal, he don't want to have a go. He gets to the pub, he's been first in. Oh, <laughs> first in at the pub. <laughs> hey, Alf! I found a rabbit hole. A bull's hole. There's no no props up there for me. Some of them bags up by me. Ready, Jim? Yeah. And if I catch you by toy lamp again, you're in trouble. <laughs> Ooh. Where's Fred? Fred? Oh, Jimmy said he's gone pub half an hour since. He should be back now because that's last bag. Bellish to be, really, yeah. <laughs> you want some assistance? Yeah, stop there. You want me to get it down? No, no, just stop there. Nah. Oh, how, how are you doing, man? <laughs> yeah, not come back, but you yeah. just put last bag in. Well, there's plenty of room there now. For, if we get a yes. wheel... Jimmy said he'd go and pull. No, no. <laughs> if we get a wheelbarrow now, oh, he's coming with some bags, so we'll get some more in. Well, if we've right. got a wheelbarrow and shovel and boom, was it all what's up, you know? We'll show you when we're on the last shovel for you. Come on oh, and do I that. Don't go <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, anyway, we'd better set off there for Astley Green. Yeah. At Astley Green, they've got a great big winding engine and a pit headgear. And we're going there for camp out overnight, and then we're going, uh, we're off to the Lake District next. Are you ready? When you are, uh, yeah. I'll try, I'll see well, if I'm I can climb up. <laughs> hey. Next stop is the Astley Green Mining Museum. But first, they've got a problem which needs some urgent attention. 
Because, as well as coal, water is fundamental to generating steam power. If it runs low, which it is doing now, they'll be in big trouble. So they'll have to find some quickly. We've got a stump fight for hydrants now. Them hydrants are very important things. And the, and the water people haven't been round and let, let it lit off for 10 years. Eventually, they end up full of mud up to top. And you arrive in your steamroller and you let lid up and it's just mud. Don't know what we do. Lord, usual plug. Pressure in there. Hmm? Well, what would have happened if you knocked down once you said? Well, we could blow the plug out and we'd be here all night then, you know. Get sacked on the railway if you did it that night. You did it. The same. Right? What you do is put the tap handle down, turn it on and blast all the mud out, you know, so you've, you've actually done the fire brigade and the water company a favour. You've cleaned out the hydrant. For it, free of charge. Bad news, eh? Do any death? I have one eye red guy on a bicycle, you know, one of them little little types. This is illegal, and what you're doing here and all that, like pinching water off the yeah. Northwest yeah. Water Authority. Yeah. You know, I, I still say yeah. you do it, think a good turn, you know, the, the water people. <laughs> it's capable of doing 50 miles on one fill up of water. And it's always circumstances, you know, like no, all along flat, no hydrants. And then it, it, you, you come suddenly over the crest of an hill, it's a bloody great hole, you know, and the water disappears. <laughs> Off the railway men are pretty fortunate because it's probably a level. With a, with a traction engine, you don't know what's around the next corner, you know. You should have a dipstick, really, but I've not got around to that yet. <laughs> When you go up, like. Hey, up. the hydrant. Go that way instead of this way. <laughs> There's a safety plug at the bottom of the boiler just above the firebox. If they'd not filled up in time, this would have melted and put the fire out. Then they wouldn't have been able to move the engine from here until the plug had been replaced. And that's a big job. In 1950, there were 70 collieries around here, employing 55,000 people. But from the mid-1950s, the industry went into decline as the pits began to be closed. Now, only the Astley Green Mining Museum survives, to tell the tale of coal mining around here. It houses Lancashire's only surviving pit headgear and engine house. Yeah, right, well, I think we'll stop here for tonight and do a few repairs tomorrow. Eh? Yeah. And I'll throw a chase after they come with a flock bed. Have a look round at the winding engine. Eh? Yeah. And uh, climbed up there once. You know. I'll just turn this off. Uh, they had a lot of bother in 1908 when they sunk it. The, the water, it's, it's water, it's yeah. seven eighths lime with cast iron tubbing, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Lady Pilkington of Pilkington Glass Fame the glass caught person. the first sod in mm. 1908. Mm. I can remember riding in here. Mm. Oh. I worked here for a spell in the 60s. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, this was coal warning shaft, this. Hey, yeah, coal. Coal mm. warning mm. shaft. Yeah, it must it's be good. one of the biggest, you know, that's been around, you know. Eh? Yeah. When you look at it, it must weigh a few hundred tonnes. Eh? I believe yeah. they're in the process of uh, getting monies together for get it repainted and mm. refurbished properly. Bed really up, you can see yeah, a few yeah. holes in it. Yeah. It's worth saving, there isn't many left now. There's none left round here, is there? No, this there's is, none round here, but... This is the last this, one in Lancashire, apart yeah, from ours. Yeah, there isn't that many. <laughs> apart from ours. <laughs> in the country, is there? It's got to be worth a big grant yeah. from, from lottery people yeah. keep it stood up, you know. If you want it... Open a ballet school, there'd be millions for you, you know, but not for paying something like that. Uh, which has uh, kept a lot of families in bread and butter for a long time. Yeah. Are we going on with a winding house? If you want, yeah. Oh. Mm. Oh. 
Oh, it's a, it's a fur machine, this, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, you only ever made three, you know. One, one for here, one for Yorkshire men, and one for, one for Africa. Uh, but this is the only one that survived. They were putting a bit of ale on it, didn't they? Biggest in Europe, this, isn't it? Eh? It's the biggest in Europe. I, I would think it must be one of the biggest steam winders in the world. Really, if you think about it. The fur castings, then, how did they get them from Blackburn to here? <laughs> eh? With difficulty, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, tracking engine. <laughs> I'll tell you, they put some work in these off the green lads on this end, you know. Oh, oh I am. What a connecting yeah, rod. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fur job, isn't it? I'm going to have a closer look. What are you doing? Get it bloody cylinder? Eh? Hey, you climbing in cylinders? Well, no, it's just, I'm just looking at the ginormity of it all, you have know. It, the, have you got a sponnet to fit there? The, uh, the key in here and, and all the tackle, you know. You could have a game of tennis in between cylinders, couldn't you? The power to turn the winder came from 16 Lancashire boilers. But all these have been cast aside and they'll never raise steam again. We managed to get three Lancashire boilers. They were looking too bad a nick, do they, really? Oh, they, 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 um, yeah. What's inside like? Yeah, I don't know. Until you go in, you got to undo that fire. door and uh, have a look inside. This one here is a modern one, this one. Look at that. Corrugated flu tubes, you know, inside. So. That was for oh, the ah, expansion ah. and contraction. To be able to change tubes on this one. Oh, oh <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah. Yeah, but it, there's less and less work in it, if you say. It's yeah. the, the, the front plate is one big pressing. It's others yeah, have got all yeah, this yeah. stuff riveted to yeah. it, you know. Yeah. I bet that's as late as 1960s or yeah. 50 summer, yeah. you know. That one looks in damn good neck, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. They're all three of them different. There have been a few men killed with these, you know, rolling round, you know. Mm, I imagine. Yeah. You, you, you don't know what's wrong with them, do you, have yet? Well, it's easy to get inside. I could tell you what's wrong with that. You undo them, you can get right along the bottom in between these two fire tubes, mm. and then up top there's another big door that you can get in, and you can walk along the top. The, the thing is, you've got to look for big, deep pit holes, and then these here, see these? Well, them's pressure tested, same as your boy. Oh, yeah, just same. Yeah. See, these here, inside yeah. there, there was two pieces of angle iron, then a bloody great lump of inch plate, and then if you look on the outside, there's more of it, isn't there? And you see on the outside? Yeah. Well, them are called gusset stairs, and they stopped that week earlier there <coughs> being, being pushed out. They're pushed out. Oof, a mammoth piece of boiler making. Let's go for our tea, come on. For our tea. <clears throat> Next day, they've got a long journey ahead as they head for West Cumbria in search of the mines that provided the iron ore for an engine like this. And Alf's still trying to get the hang of his steering. All the way, all the way. Oh, well, I'm yeah, but you, right. you, you, when you do that, you go out the way over there. And for the engine, there are big challenges ahead as Fred and Alf negotiate some of the hills of the Lake District on their way to the iron ore mine near Whitehaven. And there's a pleasant little interlude on a steam yacht on Lake Windermere. And, it, and it's fairly flat, so we should be in with a chance, aren't you? No guts in it, you know, at all. Yeah. yeah. Not happy with it at all, you know. I think I'll sell it. <laughs> Did we ever do it with that mechanical lubricant? Because it isn't working. What it is, it's, it's that, that, that. There's no oil going in the cylinder, so it's like running dry, you know, which is not good. You know. If you did that with your motor car, it wouldn't get very far, you know. You'd start making squeaky noises and... Uh, and stop. <laughs> that might be all right now. Right. 
acting engine. <laughs> John were right, you know. Should have sold a lot and bought a stamp collection. You carry it about in your back pocket. <laughs> and it's worth just as much money. Fred Steersman is retired miner Alf Molyneux. And all of this is a bit new for him. Real? <laughs> There's entrance, keep clear. Oh, yeah, right. we'll not be here that long. You don't want block in, do you? No, 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 no. no. This is the life, isn't it? Life on the open road, yeah. <laughs> See why they invented diesel engines. These things weren't really designed to be driven in traffic like this, and 11 tons moving at around 10 miles an hour doesn't stop in a hurry. It's hot, thirsty work. Time for some refreshments soon. Yeah, no, bloody sign work, though. Look over there. Sorry, dear. I want to camp out, though, we're oh. soon. Just back here. At least it's got the locals interested. It's clear, though. Hey. Block, blocks in. Well, they made this jacket, but you can't put your glasses in top of it. It must be 10, 10, 10 or 14 miles away. Yeah. Considering we aren't doing too bad. It's half past three. It's not that view, you won't leave it, but now I have to stop it though when, it, when it's going to that. <laughs> now I think we'll get to this open cast mine. They might all have gone home, but we'll get there, you know. <laughs> Tea time already, and they're still four or five miles away from the mine. They all have not left yet. This is the man who owns the mine. I've forgotten his name. Stewart. Hey? Stewart. Stewart, yeah. 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 But you don't want to have it closed tonight then. No, <laughs> you're not that bothered. You're a good pub near your pit. Yeah, not far away. You've got a decent car park. Yeah. Oh, well, we'll eat then. You won't mind your parking up. Oh, well, very good. Yeah. I'll have you see you about midnight then. Have, have you? <laughs> not that bloody far, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it was supposed to be a surprise visit, you know. Right. He gives me call, this lad, you know. I don't have to pay for it, he gives it me. Don't hear. It's been a long, hard day, and it's all been a bit of a disappointment. Time to find somewhere to stop for the night. There's something amiss somewhere, you know. Um, uh, it should go better than it is doing. Number one, the mechanical lubricators fell off altogether now, you know. <laughs> it's hanging on top of boiler. Yeah. The thing is, we've hardly any coal left. You know, we've earned all coal. You know, like the steamroller, we've got the big firing shovel, we've forgotten that, we've forgotten the big rake. With, with all the excitement, we've forgotten half the tackle. But are they going to be able to park up here? Would it offend you if we parked our machine at the end of your car park? Of course it would. Eh? No, that'd be fine. We'll sleep with it tonight, you know, we'll come and have a pint with you. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Oh, you would yeah. stay overnight? Eh? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, don't leave that, you know. It took 27 years and two divorces to get it to the state. <laughs> <laughs> it's not performed as well as I thought it would be. <laughs> and it's what, 10, 14 miles or something like that. It, it, with all the things that went wrong, I think we did bloody well get here. How's that? Good as new, that. So hopefully it'll be a bit quicker today. 
Maybe, yeah. I'm, I can't promise you nothing. <laughs> no. Anyway. Can't go yet. No, no, we're not going. We've got to have a brew, haven't we? The lady's making well, a brew. We've got to have a brew and get some water in boiler. Give uh, us key for it. we get water from? Give us key for locked doors. <coughs> Key foot locked door. Don't know. Well, it's not in the doors. Uh, All right, might be in there. We haven't used it this morning. Uh, I might have hung it up on a, on a nail in there. Um, uh, oh, yeah, it's all about the joys of tracking engine on it. Well, it's a day late but they've only got another two miles to go, so they should be at the open cast soon. This morning, believe it or not, it's performed very well, you know, we've not run out of steam, we've not run out of oil, uh, and also we've, we haven't got the, forgot the rake for blinkering the fire, and uh, the, uh, oops, wait a minute, what? Uh, oh, what have I done? I've done something very silly. I've, I got carried away and the, the bloody boiler's going to be full up to the top, as soon as we move it, woof, woof, out of the funnel, you know. That's, it's not, we're not concentrating, you see. We're acting as well as trying to do this. It's a big thing for a brain like I've got. <laughs> What's happened is that Fred has injected too much water into the boiler. Yeah, these people, Jack, they're on and off the bloody thing, you know. Give us the spanner back. Uh, this means that water no, no, will get no, sucked into the cylinder with the steam, an and that's not very good for the engine. So he's going to have to open a valve near the bottom of the boiler to get some of the boiling water out. Can you see out? No, I can't see nothing. Even bubbles, I think. You know, it's like there's something come loose somewhere, I think. It goes better backwards than forwards. There's something amiss. It's not run away, this. We can hold it back. No, we can hold it back. No, it's not too heavy. This van weighs nearly three tonnes, so there's going to be a lot of hard work in store. We've burned a bit, haven't we? The end of a perfect day, you know, we found a nice pub that does grub. And it looks nice and safe, you know, for the engine and... Uh, you know, we'll spend the night here before we go to the open cast coal mine in the morning. So, good night, so see you later. It's 6 a.m. Time to get steam up. What sort of weight is this, Brad? Uh, nine, uh, eight tons. Eight tons. In motion, isn't it? Isn't that what you want in here? Yeah, yeah. Jimmy Crooks, another retired mining friend, is following in his car to provide the backup. Not power assisted steering. <laughs> 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 when you're playing this steering. Hey Fred, you need an MOT for one of these. Not an MOT, it's uh, the boiler inspection, you know. Ah. The... You have a look at it, see if it's roadworthy. Yeah, well no, ah. they never that's a no. funny thing. They they never uh, actually ask you oh, about its mechanical condition. They're only interested in it in the boiler blowing up. Mm. And of course, mm. there's some of them are positively dangerous when it comes to going down big hills and all that. Nobody oh, oh, asks you about the state of the gears or, or the brakes, the brakes and, and all that. Right? Right. Yeah, some of them have no brakes. Like only two two gears. Yeah, for oh. the river. Slow and very slow. Oh. <laughs> Joel's here, Jimmy. It probably spread this, doesn't it? Eh? <laughs> Where are we now, Jimmy? Billinge. 
Billings. Well, where's this bloody dire straits place? He keeps Which dire on about. Place? Aye. Fred keeps saying we're in dire straits. <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> I hope we're not going to it. <laughs> That's what we was in yesterday. I mean, it's the longest journey we've been on it. And I think, really, considering we didn't leave till lunchtime and we were here at 7 o'clock. Fred Dipner has spent 27 years restoring his traction engine, and now at last it's ready for the open road. Today is day one of his big journey. He's setting off on a grand tour of Britain in search of everything that went into building and running an engine like this. Off to move now. Like the traction engine men of old, he plans to stay in his living van. Go on back, Fred. But first, he's got to get it out of his garden. He's due to leave in half an hour. You ready? Yeah, keep your fingers crossed. But there's a problem with the brakes, and it's costing them valuable time. I can't see nothing here. Hey, don't put too much on, you're going to have it. Hey, go on, it's 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 At last, after a two-hour struggle, they succeed in getting it out onto the road. I'm knackered and we're not set off yet. Right, flashing light on the back. There we are. Oh, not so much right. Yeah. Well, after a few trials and tribulations, at long last, we're ready for our epic journey. Well, the first thing we need is plenty of coal, so we're off to the coal mine. It's 12 o'clock before they get going, two or three hours behind schedule already. Whichever way you go out of Bolton, it's all uphill. So it's an early test for the engine. First day, nobody's come to us, but that's what we're doing. Can't hear you, I'm getting this here. Oh. <laughs> Their destination is an open cast mine between Wigan and St Helens. It's only about 14 miles from Bolton, so it sounds simple enough to get there in a day. But Fred's engine has had a complete rebuild, so a few teething troubles are to be expected. And they soon start. They're only a mile and a half out of Bolton, and some adjustments are needed. We've run out of steam and run out of water. I mean, that's a big hill for a traction engine. From now on, it's all downhill.